talking about the bear market, talking about disasters. If we are going into a bear market, right? We all believe that there's going to be a big bear market coming up. How do you see inflation? Right? We keep hearing inflation, inflation, inflation mm-hmm. coming up now. How do you think that will affect the crypto markets? Inflation is a lie. That's Ooh, okay. Okay. Inflation is a lie. Tell me the, more. The word yes. of the day <laughs> is deflation. I've been talking to my audience about this since June. I told them in June, wait until the fall. In the fall, you are going to see more talk of inflation than you've ever seen before. Does nobody find it a little odd that the government is telling us to be careful of inflation? That's such a great point. Yes. Nobody thinks that's weird. (laughs) What, what, What have you believed the government on in the last two years? Nothing. 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 <laughs> Nothing. I saw an so, article yesterday that said that that was trying to to speculate on the idea that inflation was good for us, and how right. and here's why. Yeah, it's so crazy. But here's what people have to understand. Okay, if we keep going at the rate of inflation we are going at, we lose the reserve currency status for the world within two years from now. Do you think that's what politicians want? Do, do, do you do you not think that our politicians are smart enough to realize that? That that and now granted, 90% of these politicians are just told what, what to say and do. So it's really people right. above them that are making these decisions. Uh, but the fact is, we're not gonna lose the lose the reserve currency. I actually believe we're gonna switch to the digital dollar. This will be the uh reserve currency of the world. It will go if you look at that chart that shows like started off in in Portugal and then it went here then it went you know I think it went to Spain maybe and then it went to uh I think the Netherlands had it at some point what, whatever it is we ended up with the United States and the dollar the next one will be the digital dollar it will get its own classification which I believe USDC is going to be involved in but the fact is well if you think about it if that occurs now you fix a lot of the supply and demand problems with the dollar because suddenly the digital dollar is available borderless across the world and everybody can instantly get access to USDC, which would be the the digital dollar. So you would inflate the demand immensely while not really moving the supply. Now you fix that. A lot of people think we're heading to hyperinflation. (laughs) 0% chance we ever see hyperinflation in the United States. 0%. So how do you see this deflation thing playing out? Do you see it as something like that would... Be a, an economic destroyer, right? Kind of resetting the yeah, whole system. The, the deflation you... is the economic destroyer. The, the deflation is the economic destroyer. It is the black swan event. Go back and look what happened right before the Great Depression. Okay. Look at what happened in Japan when they moved to deflation. Look across the world when these things start moving to deflation. What you see is economic disaster. That is the economic. Here, here's why. Because when you move to deflation, and this one is very sneaky, because at first, it, it feels good. good because you go in. When's the last time you bought some milk? When's the last time you, you bought some milk? yesterday? A few days okay. ago. Yeah. Or, or, or some gas. Right. Oh, yes. gas is killing yeah. me. Oh, how, how does it feel to, to pay those prices on things? Terrible. Terrible, Terrible. Right. Okay. Okay. Imagine if all of a sudden you go to the store tomorrow and your gallon of milk is a dollar 40 and your gas is down to, now I don't know if gas really equates to, to retail products, but we'll just for example, yeah. you, you go and you see gas is all of a sudden back down to a dollar 25 per gallon. Okay. Feels great. Feels great, right? Well, let's use the milk as an example. Uh, let's say you have Mayfield, which is a big milk provider down here in the Southeast. I don't know how national they are. Maybe they are. But the fact is, is that the milk price lowers. Okay. When deflation happens and the price of the milk goes down, people feel good, but who gets hurt? The business, Mayfield itself gets hurt because now it's not bringing in as much money it was bringing before. What happens when businesses stop bringing in the same amount of money? They have to make job cuts. So what deflation actually does is it makes it to where companies are forced to start laying people off. And you guys know right now, right? Nobody can find, nobody... Uh, no businesses can, can find people to work, right? Yeah. My Arby's, my local Arby's, I went to it like uh, six weeks ago and I went through the drive through at six o'clock on a Sunday and they were closed. I said, sorry, we haven't got anybody to work. Closed. Yep. True story. Yep. How, how many places do you see like that? The, the employed have power right now 
over the unemployed, or, or, or I'm sorry, over the employers. The employed have power over the employers right now because they have all the leverage. People are wanting to switch to, to remote work. Well, that's great. That's fine. You, you can do it. You can go find somewhere because there is a surplus of job openings, right? Yeah. Well, I think this is going to bite people in the behind here pretty soon because we are going to move back to a place where the employers have the power again. That's the way capitalism works, right? Like you look at the people claiming $15 an hour, minimum wage. Let's go. Let's go do it. Uh, you, you know what happens now? You go to McDonald's and there's not a cashier. You put everything in on a robot. The employers always win. That's the way it's set up. That's why people are encouraged to start their own businesses. That's the yeah. only way that you win because you're not making money for other people. So when we see that happen, we kick into the deflation. The prices go down. The profits go down. The people get laid off. We are now going to be back in a position where there are way less jobs than people to work them. And I think that's why, you know, on a side note, it's really important to start looking into ways you can make money in a uh, in a digital economy because yeah. that is going to be safe. Whereas, you know, your, your regular jobs are also and, and you know what it'll do also is it'll make it where we move closer and faster towards A.I. and things like that. But uh, just yeah. lastly, I, oh, I want to get yeah. back to the point about hyperinflation. We won't ever have hyperinflation in the United States. Because the rest of the world will not allow it to happen. If the United States economy turned into Venezuela, the entire world economy would crash because yeah. they depend too much on us giving assistance to other countries, paying debts to other countries, and really being a, a, a large component of the world trade. If we were removed out all, all of a sudden out of that and all of a sudden dollars were not worth nothing, yes, reserve currency would go somewhere else. But the world economy would take a major hit. So yeah. the world would have to bail us out. So we'll never go through hyperinflation. That's a narrative. That's a talking point. It makes sense when you look at the parabolic movement of the uh, of the money supply chart. But we are going to see that thing go. Well, let me let me let me do that again. Go flat. It's going to flatline. So 